To make it to the NFL, you need talent. But that talent needs to be refined. You aren't just born with these skills, they have to be crafted. Years and years of fine tuning. Every moment, every detail. There are no shortcuts. The only thing that you would need to get here is work. A constant pursuit of perfection. You need to be relentless. Ken Anio. Um, I'm Russell Gage's trainer. Russ is like a little brother. We connect in a bunch of different ways other than just train an athlete. It's more so we have a lot of similarities with my parents, their relationship, just their core values as, as far as like rearing kids. We were raised the same in the same type of household. <laughs> So no oh, <laughs> He's a junior, uh, which means he's named after his dad. I'm a junior, I'm named after my dad. We get the same, go out in public and say, oh man, you look just like your dad. There'll be times where certain stuff that I'm thinking, I'll hit him up, he's like, man, I was just thinking that. Or to prove himself right, he'll put control on speakerphone and say, hey, what did I just say? And it'll be the same thing that I just told him. So a lot of times we're thinking on the same level. So I think that connection came more so of, okay, if we could take this same way of thinking to the football field, let's strategize this. Our relationship grew stronger. And then even over the time, we realized like we still, we have a whole lot more in common. Me and Ken are like close knitted. We have the same um, values and, and, and just about anything. I mean, we we almost finish each other's thoughts, sentences, like as if we've known each other, you know, our entire lives. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I get a chance to see guys all over, from the youth to the high school ranks to the college ranks and every level has its its challenges. So when you're talking about making it pro, you know, it's very rare. You don't see it often. Those traits are similar with those guys that make it pro. The biggest thing being work ethic. Work ethic and timing is everything. I'm probably the definition of a homebody guy. You know, I love my city, I love Louisiana, Baton Rouge, everything about it. The food, everything, man. So, any chance I get to come down, I try to, while staying on top of everything that I need to. Reason being is like, for me growing up, there's so much stuff that went into, that made me who I am, that, that went into the makeup of who I am. I, I, I attach you know, strongly to, to things like that. I attach to things um, deeply. And, and one of the things I'm, I'm attached to is just this home, Louisiana. This used to seem so like unreal. Like when you, cause the Super, we played here, we played at Scotlandville. Um, but for the most part, you knew the Super Bowl was here when I was growing right. up. 
and I would walk in and it'd be like, man, I just, this is the big stage. Like, in my mind, this was just the biggest stage you could play on. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, it's still pretty big, even right. to this day, like even with me being older, it still seems pretty big. So it almost felt like running out the locker room in the NFL game. Right. Like, I'm here, right. I made it. I made it. I, right, bro, and I, you know, they did a great job of making it feel like that way too. Yeah. Like, I played in the Super Bowl when I was 11. Came out, bro. They just had the fireworks going. It was at nighttime too, yeah. and the lights. Oh, stuff. Uh, stuff. It felt like I was in a real Super Bowl. I felt like I was in a real Super Bowl. It's been real. Real. It's been real. Real. Tim Brady gotta get some yak, man. Cause you know it's always a dream to play college football and pro football, but you don't actually be around. when you're not actually around it and not actually able to see that type of stuff. Right. It starts to feel like. It's not really possible. It's a it's a it's a legit dream. I'm, I'm just really dreaming. So when you see it happening, right. it becomes a thing of like, oh, that is it is possible. It is a possibility. Like right. it's right there. It seems like it was in arm's reach. The point in my life where I realized I wanted to play in the NFL, I had to be like six or seven years old. I turned on the, my dad turned on the game. He had the game on, he always had the games on. Um, and I'm just watching and I'm just, you know, kind of in awe of everything that was just happening. You know, it was just everything I want, everything I could think of, everything I could dream of. It was, it was right there in front of me on the TV. And it's just a feel I had, like I wanted to play in the NFL. I wanted to play professional football. I would see shooting stars and I would wish upon shooting stars, like, let me get to the NFL. That's all I asked for. And that was just something that carried through my whole life. Like, Rush, you gotta make it to the NFL. You gotta, you gotta try, you gotta, you gotta work your butt off. You gotta get there. My dad kind of, I give him a lot of credit. He, he knew that was my dream. He kind of, he pushed me. He pushed me and I, you know, I'm thankful for it because it made me work even harder. When he was, let me see, I guess he was about six years old. I asked him, you know, like any dad would ask their kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, uh, I want to play in the NFL. And that was typical kid answer to me, you know, because that's what, most kids have said something like, you know, I want to play baseball. I want to play in the NFL. So, and he got into sports. He played a lot of Pee Wee football, Little League baseball, and things of that nature. And then when he was, um, I guess, about nine, I asked him again to see where his focus was. So I said, oh, what you want to what you want to do when you grow up? He answered me like, um, like I insulted him. <laughs> He said, Dad, I told you I won't play in the NFL. <laughs> it added kind of fire to the fuel. It added fire to the fire I already had. He really pushed me. So but I, I knew I wanted to play in the NFL kind of my whole life, basically. I said, OK. So you know, we had a talk from there. You know, I was telling them about the work it takes, you know, how hard it is going to be, and you know, the dedication you got to have. And he said, like, it was like, you know, okay, okay. I said, well, you want me to help you? He said, yeah. So, and we took it from there and I worked with him a lot and, and I could see his athletic profile coming out as the years passed, you know, I noticed he was doing things that was a little different from the average kid. Russ was always the type of child that he, he was very tough. His dad, you know, he didn't give up. When he would play any sports, he would go do it over and over and over again until he got it right. And there were times I would just say, Russ, he would be outside playing. I say, come on inside. I say, you know, take a rest. And if he could play at it all day long and wouldn't get it right, but he was going the next day he was going right back at it. He kind of would get down on himself because he wanted to work hard at it, he wanted to do it, and he wanted to get it, get it right. 
And those were times that I had to be there to support him and say, hey, try it again tomorrow, but you need to rest. <laughs> and he would, he would come on in the house and he would, you know, but the next day he would come in and the next day he was back at it again. But I will always be there to support him. I said, well, keep trying. I say, practice, 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 and you'll get it right. As I got older, I think it became more relevant that, okay, I want to go to the NFL and I don't think there's a lot of people that don't believe that won't happen. There was this kind of underdog thing put on me. I put on myself when I entered high school in the sense of this skinny, kind of lanky kid. Who's, who is this like, kid? You know, that's how I, I viewed it. Like people don't really know who I am, you know, but I'm a hardworking, athletic kid. You know, and they're gonna know who I am soon. You know, as you watch kids coming up, and you, you know, they have dreams of doing things when they grow up. Like his dream was to play in the NFL, but you always have individuals who will say, well, I don't think you're gonna make it. You might need to try something else, you know? Things like that always got him low because of that was what he wanted. And a lot of the times, me and his mom would talk to him and he explained to him, look, you're gonna run into people like that. Don't worry about what they say. You just follow your dreams. Do the things that you want to do. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, what you want to, it'll come. I went to college as an athlete. You know, that's the most accurate thing in my bio when I was coming out of high school. I played quarterback, receiver, some running back. I played uh, safety, corner, outside linebacker, inside linebacker. I played literally everything. There's a clip, I punted the ball. I think this way. About a 30 yard punt, made the tackle, two yard game, a little bit of everything. But at the time, I think it was some kind of record of snaps I played. Over 1,400 or something, over 15, it was something crazy. Yeah. I literally almost never left the field, but I played just about everything. I knew that he played sports. I wasn't like sure that, I knew he played sports. That was it. I didn't know that he played um, football. Uh, I didn't correlate the two of like people saying Russ or like Jumpman as they called him in high school. Uh, I just didn't put two and two together that it was him. And one of my biggest questions to him was like, have you started applying to colleges? Like, what are you doing? Are you looking for scholarships like academically? And he was just kind of like, he laughed it off like, like colleges, like I'm an athlete, you know, they recruit me. But he didn't tell me that. So I just kept going on and on him going to college. She was asking me questions. She was like, you know, so what? Are you planning to go to college? You know, I had offers. And I was like, okay. So she really don't know. Okay. I said, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go to I think I'm gonna go to college. And she would say, Well you better start applying. You better start applying to colleges. And you know, I didn't tell her because you know, cause I, I but I was in shock that like wow she really doesn't know that I'm I play football have offers <laughs> I'm, I'm going to college to play football like you know and I found it I, I might I, I don't know I, I, now that I'm older I think I found that actually more attractive that she didn't know who I was everything I talk about in family she gave me that same feeling right she gave me that same feeling she gave me that same vibe of family atmosphere I mean she loves her family um, just as much. She's homebody just like I am. I understood how I am, how my family is, how things are right now. It's kind of rare and I felt like I met someone rare right now and I didn't want to lose her. I, I, I had no intent of it. I knew, I knew years ago that I wanted her to be my wife. It was just a matter of time. 